How did Peter McKay miss scoring on an empty net? What was the stinking albatross in his campaign? Well, there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle and we're going to try to piece them together today. <laughs> it's called winning. It's called winning. All right, next Prime Minister. <laughs> Peter McKay throughout his whole campaign refused to engage with independent conservative media. Now, Aaron O'Toole, he was much better at this. He had Jeff Bollingall on his campaign, who was the founder of the Post Millennial. In some instances, it seemed like the Post Millennial was being used as a campaign tool, but Overall, Aaron O'Toole was much more friendly to Rebel News and to True North, organizations that he didn't have a staff member with a hand in the other pot. Peter McKay, however, wouldn't touch anyone. In fact, when I asked him very basic questions, topical questions about the RCMP and institutional racism, slam dunk questions for conservatives really, he ran away to go to the potty. Peter, you you no, you, just did media value. you yeah I didn't get to answer the answer question. Why'd you why you take so many? Why'd you take so few questions? Peter, why'd you take so few questions? I want to ask if you'll apologize for calling Jason. All the questions that were asked of me. I'm not sure why you took so so few questions compared to everyone else. That were asked of me. They told me I was done. Peter, sorry. You must be confused. The escalator was over there. Would you be able to tell me, will you apologize to Jason Kenney? Now let's contrast that in that same location, in that hotel in Toronto, with how Aaron O'Toole responded to me, surprising him with questions. Watch this. How are you? Hey. Kean with Rebel News. Uh, we've been trying to catch up with you for quite some time throughout sure. the campaign, and we just wanted to ask a few questions. We asked every other candidate who showed up today, Leslin didn't show up, she's studying at home. Uh, we wanted to know if you think the RCMP are systemically racist. Uh, I'm a big, big supporter of those who serve in uniform, obviously, as a veteran, so I have a lot of respect for our police. Do you see the difference there? There is some respect. There's an amount of respect. Peter McKay had absolutely none, and I'm not talking towards me. I could care less how politicians treat me. I cover this story regardless of how I'm treated, and it doesn't really change the substance of the story. What Peter McKay lacked there was respect for the tens of thousands of people who watched that clip and the over million people who subscribed to Rebel News and other independent outlets throughout the country. Peter McKay didn't think that they were worthwhile. In fact, he relied on the Toronto Star, the socialist Toronto Star who subscribed to the socialist Atkinson principles. He relied on them to get his message out. I wonder how many votes that got him. They endorsed him after all. When it came to independent media, Aaron O'Toole used every medium available to him, and, and that was clearly to his massive benefit when the ballots were being counted. Now, what's the second piece to this puzzle? Well, Peter McKay had an air of arrogance to him, not just when he was not talking to me in a hotel lobby, but when he was running his whole campaign. It also sounded a little bit disingenuous when it was coming from Peter McKay, putting out emails saying that he was the co-founder of the party, acting like he was much more important than he was, but it all came from the people behind him. Peter McKay actually recycled the staff of Maxime Bernier's campaign. Now this seems so strange. Maxime Bernier, the hard right libertarian candidate, well the same people that were behind him, Alex Nuttall, Brian Storseth, Emerson Grafe, well they were also behind Maxime Bernier's failed campaign. It's a little bit strange to think of because when you think of Peter McKay, you don't really think of Maxime Bernier, yet for some reason Peter McKay recycled his staff from them staff that lost the last election. He thought that they would somehow carry him to victory this time. There was also another individual who you might know from a Rebel News video. His name was Chisholm Portier. Well, Chisholm was also recycled staff, but he actually came from Michael Chong's campaign. You remember that pro-carbon tax red Tory from Ontario? Yeah, Peter McKay enlisted his communications director to run his communications. Peter McKay said time and time again that he didn't support a carbon tax, but his staff actually, they supported otherwise. Peter McKay's staff was disingenuous at best, and Peter McKay came across exactly that way when it came to the voters. That's why he was nobody's second choice. He was only the first choice of Nova Scotia and a few ridings in Quebec. Nobody wanted Peter McKay because nobody knew what they were getting 
when they got him? Was it Maxime Bernier or was it Michael Chong? There's a big difference there, and Peter McKay had absolutely no idea how to communicate that message because he was relying on staff that just didn't know how to win an election. Now, the third point, and you might have seen this at the start of the campaign, Peter McKay got all of these caucus endorsements, the most caucus endorsements out of any candidate, and he thought that that was going to ride him to victory. The problem is with the Conservative Party of Canada, whether you support them or not, you have to appreciate what happened here in this election. The grassroots of the party spoke up, saying that they weren't going to let the party elites from Ontario and Quebec decide who the next leader was. The party elites selected Peter McKay. The grassroots actually selected Aaron O'Toole. Now, Peter McKay throughout his whole campaign was relying on those endorsements and some of the most cringy communication pieces I've ever seen in an election. Watch this. Now, on top of those seizure-inducing advertisements, Peter McKay, it also appeared, stole his logo from an organization in Calgary called Maple Money. You might remember the story. Listen to what the owner of Maple Money had to say. I'm personally not too concerned about it, but, but one thought I've been having is, in the future, say, say Peter McKay goes all the way and, and, uh, and, and wins the leadership, people might start to see my brand as being the copycat, and then that's the only thing that would concern me. Now, it turns out this puzzle wasn't too hard to solve. Peter McKay was just a lackluster candidate with lackluster people behind him with lackluster policies. When it came to literally anyone else, they would be more appealing because it seemed like the only people that were supporting Peter McKay were people that he was paying. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the star candidate in this race, and it actually wasn't Aaron O'Toole. It was Leslin Lewis, who would have won on the second ballot if her voters were in the right place. If they were in Quebec, for example, where one riding had only 40 votes cast. In Calgary, there were ridings with thousands of votes cast. Leslin Lewis stole the heart and soul of the Conservative Party. That is rural Alberta, even some of Calgary. Saskatchewan, in fact, those racist hillbillies from Saskatchewan, well, they actually voted her first on the very first ballot. Leslin Lewis spoke to the part of this party that founded it, the reformers, the Stephen Harper fans. Leslin Lewis, a black woman from an immigrant family, ran away with this race, whether she won it officially or not. Now only time will tell where Erin O'Toole puts Leslin Lewis in cabinet. Maybe she will replace Christia Freeland as deputy prime minister if Erin O'Toole wins the next election and if Leslin Lewis decides to run to become a member of parliament. But what is clear is that there's a bright future ahead in politics for Leslin Lewis should she choose to continue on. For Rebel News, I'm Kean Bexty. Thanks so much for tuning in to Rebel News here on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe to us if you've already done that. Be sure to ring the notification bell. If you've already done that, go to helprebelnews.com. There you can pitch in a few bucks if you can to help us with our coverage, coverage that you can't find anywhere else.